Hey guys, we recently tested the Milwaukee M12 23 gauge pin nailer. This new pin nailer runs off the M12 battery platform. It weighs 3.3 pounds and it drives 23 gauge headless pins ranging from half inch to an inch and three eighths. Pin nails are best suited for delicate trim and moldings and, and super thin veneers where a larger gauge finish nailer would, would certainly split the wood. Now, 23 gauge pin nails leave tiny, barely visible marks in the wood, which is huge when you're dealing with pre-finished molding and trim. And for us, in our work, that translates mostly into finished uh, cabinetry type molding, pre-painted, pre-finished molding. You want very small holes. Now, Milwaukee chose to go with a uh, traditional style trigger, a double trigger versus a contact tip. I'm really glad they did because if you've ever used pin nailers with a contact tip, you know that when you depress the contact tip on small moving um, molding parts, you can move it. So the double trigger eliminates that frustration. Uh, so the first trigger that you pull is the safety switch. You pull that in and hold it, and then the second trigger will deploy the pin, will, will engage the nail gun. So um, an interesting thing you might not know about this this m12 pinner is that there is an actual safety feature built into the switches it's an electronic timeout now if you um, pull the safety trigger and you hold it down for more than 40 seconds the nail the nailer will not fire and you'll need to let go you'll need to recycle that trigger and pull it back in to activate the nail gun again to turn it back on i think this is a great feature I do think that the 40 seconds is too long for any nail gun to be depressed. I'd like to see it go to 20 seconds. A couple of nice things that you might have missed on this pinner if you weren't looking closely um, is on the loading magazine. If you look closely, there's a small magnet. It's missed by many, but this magnet is your third hand when you're loading or, or, or changing out pin sizes. The magnet is strong enough to hold a small little clip of pins, you know, maybe a few left, to avoid falling out and get cockeyed, which is a nice touch, Milwaukee. Um, looking at the top of the tool, you'll notice that the nitrogen tank, tank tapers back towards the front, and this keeps the business end of the tool narrower, more compact. That's going to allow you better maneuverability and probably better line of sight, and we always appreciate that in a finishing tool. Another nice feature is the non-mar contact tips. You're like, what? Well, hold up. The reserve tip that's clipped on the back of the magazine, if you look closely, you'll notice that it's actually a half tip. The half tip takes an already nicely designed front end of the tool and makes it even more visible. The half tip is for those carpenters that argue that they don't like the tips and they take them off because they can't see the sight or the feed lips of the tool. That's the area where the striker and the feed on the pin feed through. Now, um, it's just a nice feature. It gives you better visibility. There's also a depth of drive knob, and this is something that I immediately notice and appreciate it because on my pneumatic pinners that I have, you gotta use an Allen wrench to move that nose back and forth. And a depth of drive um, knob is certainly way easier and way faster. The uh, nailer has a magazine reload indicator, which I never seem to notice or look at, but it's there. Uh, and a dry fire lockout, which is useful to prevent unnecessary holes in your workpieces. That's huge. The pin nailer's cylinder has two parts, basically, that make up the tank, inner and outer tank. The space between those cylinders is the area where Milwaukee fills with nitrogen. The striker and piston travel within that inner, inner cylinder and they use the pressure in the tank to provide the power to dry the fastener. Now, there's two reasons really why Milwaukee uses nitrogen instead of, say, compressed air. First, when the tool is filled during the manufacturing or the service process, uh, they pull a vacuum on that tank, it's completely clear. The tank is then filled with 99.9% .9 nitrogen, so there's essentially no condensation in it. This could be done using air as well, uh, with a compressor that separates condensation and moisture from the air, but it's easier and more effective and repeatable to do it with pure nitrogen, 99% nitrogen. The second reason is that nitrogen limits any seal permeation. Any sealed pressurized vessel will experience a small level of permeation through the seals over time. Nitrogen permeates much slower than air. So by using nitrogen, the permeation can be kept kind of 
smaller, so it would be many years, if ever, that the user or owner of the tool would ever experience degraded performance due to permeation. So that's why they use nitrogen. Now, this pin nailer was designed to come with a three-year warranty, and it's designed to last about three or four years of use, really heavy use. That equates to about 50 to 70,000 pin nails installed. Pretty good. Now, as far as runtime on this pin nailer, if you equip it with a 1.5 amp hour battery, you're gonna get 750 pins. There's also an LED light. Now, in the past, I scoffed at, at the idea of LED lights on nailers, especially a pin nailer. Why would you need it? But after using it on a project recently where we had kind of mediocre lighting, I actually have to eat some crow. I really like the feature. Uh, this pin nailer, it sells as a kit for $249. That's gonna be at Ohio Power Tool. The kit's gonna include a CP 1.5 amp hour battery, charger, um, and, uh, and a contractor bag. I ended up using uh, this M12 pin nailer here in the shop and also, like I said, in the kitchen, uh, kitchen cabinet installation. And uh, some crown molding, we did a, a, a hood around a vent. And besides the fact that the pinner is cordless and eliminates the hose and that frustration, there are probably three things that I really liked about it. First of all, it's well designed. And with, with items like the depth of, drive um, depth of drive knob that I talked about, that magazine magnet, the LED light, some decent care and thought and feedback went into this nailer. They looked at the tool and they innovated it and tried to eliminate pain points for us. Number two, precision. It's accurate. Uh, the double action trigger, non-marring precision point tip where you've got really good uh, sight, line of sight. Um, it's nice. The pin placement was accurate. I just, I liked the line of sight. It's accurate. Number three, performance. When I think of performance, I think of size, weight, power. The M12 pinner is pretty close to my pneumatic nailer size and it punches pins into hardwoods like nobody's business. The nailer has the power to sink 23 gauge, inch and 3 8 pins into oak and maple and other hardwoods with ease. And we did some testing in the shop, it's, it's easy. Um, that's something that I've not seen in competitive cordless pinners. All right, look, so overall impression. This pinner now lives in my Packout shelf unit in my van um, with my other finished nailers. At $249 as a kit, I think this is a worthwhile investment. If this nailer lasts three, four years, when you amortize that cost, that's 62 bucks a year. What would you pay for no compressor setup and hose setup? Would you pay 62 bucks a year? I would. The pin is a win. Uh, cordless, no hose power to get the job done. That's it. All right, that's all we got to say about this tool, guys. If you liked the review, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Toolbox Buzz. And oh yeah, please don't forget to follow Toolbox Buzz and Concord Carpenter on Instagram. See you next time.